Drop a like and do share. Leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos. Hi friends, welcome back to the course on Introduction to Material Science and Engineering offered by Edupedia World. We have been discussing different kind of heat treatment processes. I will continue the discussion in today's lecture. Let us begin by discussing tempering process. I mentioned this briefly the tempering process that it is a requirement after the hardening process. The hardening process gives you a very hard microstructure but the problem is that it is not really ductile it is very brittle structure. So the hard, hardened martensite needs to be tempered in order to restore some of its ductility. That is exactly what is done in the tempering process. In tempering process what we do is that we heat to a temperature below lower critical temperature and that is followed by either air cooling or furnace cooling depending on how much uh, ductility we want to recover. What this does tempering process is that it reduces the hardness and also the strength. In addition to that it reduces wear resistance also. So these are the compromises that we are doing when we are doing tempering. But what is the advantage of tempering? Tempering leads to improvement in the ductility and the toughness of the material. So basically we are compromising with hardness, strength and wear resistance in order to gain back some ductility and toughness into the martensitic structure. Okay. In addition, it also the tempering press process also relieves internal strain. When you basically quench the material while hardening process is carried out, a lot of internal strain can develop in the material because the, uh, the process is really quick and there is a thermal shock that uh, introduces internal strain. This tempering process takes care of that too. Tempering process normally takes place between around 250 degrees Celsius to 650 degrees Celsius but in the range of 350 to around 600 degrees Celsius a process known as tempering embrittlement takes place. What happens is in tempering embrittlement is that I will not go into the details of the physics but this leads to embrittling of the material. Okay, So we normally try to avoid this temperature or we cool in this range of temperature quite quickly so that embrittlement does not take place. Though the idea is that this embrittlement can be reversed but we try to avoid the tempering embrittlement process. Now what are the physical changes that are taking place when tempering is happening? What is exactly happening that is leading to a improvement in toughness and a reduction in the strength? What is happening is that martensite is really super saturated with carbon. The BCT martensite is super saturated with carbon and during tempering some of the carbon is rejected by the BCT martensite. Okay? In addition to that this, there is some spherodization taking place. Okay? Spherodization taking place and the ultimate microstructure as a result of tempering which we have has ferrite matrix in which very very fine carbide particles in the form of spears are dispersed throughout. Thereby this leads to improvement in ductility, compromises with strength slightly but also improves the toughness of the material. Okay, So this is the idea behind tempering process. Now let us discuss os tempering. Os tempering is uh, temper uh, rather a uh, heat treatment process in which austenite is converted to bainite. I will use the CCT curve uh, or the TTT curve to show you what exactly is happening in the os tempering process. This is uh, temperature, this is time, eutectoid temperature, so A1 temperature. Perlite start curve, perlite finish curve. So we have perlite if uh, 
the temperature time curve enters this region but if we go from austenite first we need to form 100% austenite and then if we cool it such that we avoid the nose and then we isothermally let it stay at this temperature then what we have is we have benite start and we have benite finish thereby we form benite and once we have formed 100% benite then we cool the material okay this process of formation of benite from austenite by isothermally holding it in the benitic range gives us benite and this process is called os tempering process okay now depending on whether we keep the temperature high or low obviously it has to be below the nose we'll get either very fine benetic structure or coarse benetic structure similar to os tempering which gives us benetic structure we have something known as mart tempering mart tempering as the name suggests gives us martensitic structure okay what we do in this is to obtain martensite obviously either you can quench it in, as in the hardening process cool it really to uh, room temperature or to even lower temperature to get martensite but as a result of that what happens a lot of stress is developed because of the thermal shock which it uh, obtains but in mart tempering we use a different approach what we do what we do is we take the body to the austenitic range form 100% austenite then really cool it quickly to a temperature above the martensite formation temperature and then hold it isothermally at that temperature for a long time but not long enough to cut the benite start curve okay we avoid cutting the benite start curve so even till this time we have 100% austenite and before the benite start curve is touched then we quench it further into the martensite start uh, and further to the room temperature right thereby we get martensitic structure what is the advantage of this compared to hardening process the advantage is once we reach this temperature and give it sufficient time before formation of martensite what will happen is that the whole body acquires this temperature rather if the body is large even in that case uniform temperature is achieved throughout the body and thereby when we quench it we get low internal stress less distortion and as a result improved mechanical property okay if we just quench it directly then a lot of internal stress is generated and a lot of distortion the shape is distorted but this intermediate isothermal hold gets rid of that those problems there will obviously still be some internal strain but the amount of internal strain and the amount of distortion will be much less than hardening process okay so you see the difference between os tempering and mart tempering in os tempering we used to cut through the benite start and benite finish to obtain 100% benetic structure in mart tempering we avoid even the benite start curve hold it as long as possible in order to get homogeneous temperature throughout the body and then quench it further okay and the final heat treatment that we will discuss is known as sub zero treatment if you remember i said that during martensitic formation in hardening process or even in the mart tempering process we do not really get 100% martensite okay we have some martensite plus retained austenite and the amount of martensite we obtain depends on the temperature temperature decides how much martensite we will have lower we go into the temperature lower temperature will let the material go more will be the amount of martensite formed 
thereby less will be the retained austenite form sub zero temperature treatment exactly exploits that idea it basically takes the material to very very low temperature to as low as minus 30 degree celsius to minus 70 degree celsius as a result of that what happens is the amount of retained austenite that remains in the body is very less and maximum amount of the material is converted to martensite okay so to see the cct and ttt curve temperature benite start benite finish martensite start around normally around 200 degrees celsius depends on the composition and stuff Uh, zero degree Celsius around maybe we have ninety to ninety-five percent martensite. Minus fifty degree Celsius we might have ninety-nine percent martensite. So what basically is done here is that sub-zero treatment means we go to really low temperature, thereby maximum amount of martensite is obtained. Okay. This leads to increased hardness because we have now have a very high percentage of martensite and very less amount of retained austenite. The hardness ends up being very very high, and obvious. Uh, and again, the wear resistance is also very much improved as a result of the zero sub-zero treatment. Problems with sub-zero treatment: lot of internal stress development, increase in internal stress. And obviously, like any martensitic treatment, any hardening treatment, tempering is required even for sub after sub zero treatment. So the formation of martensite needs to go hand in hand with tempering process in order to get tempered martensite, which has at least some ductility in it. Fine. So this brings us to the end of the discussion on different heat treatment processes. Today's discussion we saw we began by discussing tempering process, which is used to restore some ductility in martensitic structure. We saw the benite formation process, process uh, which is known as OS tempering. We saw martensite formation process, which is an alternative process known as mart tempering. And finally, to get high percentages of austenite uh, rather high percentage of martensite and convert the retained austenite to martensite further we let the material undergo sub zero treatment with this we come to a conclusion on the different heat treatments i hope you got a good glimpse into how different heat treatments leads to different changes in the microstructure as well as different property formation property at the end product and why different heat treatment is required under different conditions okay next lecture we'll start discussing a new concept a new idea till then have a great day goodbye